Back in the old days, there was this silly little saying that mothers and perhaps even fathers would tell their daughters to help give them a moral compass when it came to some of the difficult things in life. They would say, honey, a man does not need to buy a cow if he's getting the milk for free. And of course, this little cryptic conversation had to do with sex. So why would a man marry a woman or give a woman his commitment if he's getting all the sex he needs for free? And so that's what I want to talk about today. Not cows, but sex and how it's affecting our culture, not just women, but men, and how younger and younger women are being placed in a position where they have an enormous amount of pressure on them to start having sex at an earlier and earlier age. And as a culture and a society, we all have to deal with this because it's affecting us in negative ways that are far reaching and have implications that I don't think we fully understand. So as a man, I've had a lot of free milk and uh, I hate to betray my brothers who also love their free milk, but I'm afraid the free milk is making us sick because we're getting way too much of it. And in the cultural arena of interpersonal relationships and um, the balance of I hate to say power because that's such a loaded word, but there is a, there's an equilibrium that needs to occur between the genders in order for a society to be healthy and to prosper. And the availability of free sex, and that's really what we have now, there's, sex has almost no value to men because it's everywhere. We can get it anytime we want, whether it be, you know, from a dating app or um, through pornography or um, by going and paying for it. I mean, sex is everywhere. So like in any other economy, if you increase the supply of something, the value of it is going to drop because the demand um, won't be nearly as high. And as a result, a lot of women I'm seeing are having difficulty finding men to marry. And that's a very complex situation too, because uh, there, there's so many aspects to that. But just talking about the sex part of it, why would a man buy the cow if the milk is for free? I mean, really, well, cows are expensive to maintain, you know? Cows can be troublesome. Cows break things. Have you ever had a cow in your house? Can you imagine? Cows can be very, very problematic. So, um, yeah, most men are not looking to buy cows these days. In heterosexual relationships, women have always been the guardians of sex. And men have always been the guardians of commitment. Right now, the, the gates of sex have been broken down. There are no guardians for that anymore. So sex is... The doors to sex are open all the time. So there is really no reason for men to provide commitment in exchange for sex. So the fact that women are struggling to find men is probably not a surprise because what we've created here is a polygamous society. We no longer have a monogamous society. We have um, a fairly small percentage of men having lots and lots of sex and um, a very large number of women competing for that small group of men. And a large percentage of those men really have no reason to give their commitment because the sex is so free and cheap to them. So you can see how the current structures in our society are not working for anyone. They don't work for men because the vast majority of men are finding it more and more difficult to find a partner because they're all looking towards the high level men, the good-looking, wealthy guys, and the um, vast majority of women, perhaps even all women, or a high number of women, a high percentage of women, are really struggling to find uh, a good man. 
because most of the guys that are in alignment with them, say on the um, status ladder, uh, when you combine attractiveness and education and money and all that stuff, well, they're not interested in them anymore, um, especially for a commitment. And then all the high status guys, well, they have no incentive to give you a commitment. So you can see that if the gates of sex are no longer guarded and the milk is free, yeah, there's no reason for mon monogamous relationships any longer. I think that back in caveman days, before we had marriage, this is kind of what it was like. A few guys they got all the sex. Um, they would have sex with lots and lots of women. And most of the guys would not get any sex. And none of the women would get any kind of commitment. So there'd be a lot of uncommitted women running around. And a few very happy guys. A lot of very frustrated guys. And um, a lot of undefended women. And I think that's where we're headed right now. I think we're, we're reverting back to our our primal roots, if you will. But when it comes to this issue, it's very clear, it's common sense. This, this ain't working. This just ain't gonna work. And if we don't change it, yeah, it's just gonna get worse. Um, we could find ourselves back in some form of, you know, relationship anarchy, and that doesn't benefit anyone. In fact, we may already be there. So I'm not some religious nut, you know, and uh, I certainly don't support people like Clarence Thomas and their draconian, you know, government has the right to tell you what to do with your body and how people um, should behave in their private lives. But at the same time, I do see on a cultural level where we are really um, struggling when it comes to interpersonal relationships. And a lot of that has to do with... Uh, I hate to say it, but the sexual revolution and really what has emerged as an increasing amount of very toxic femininity in our culture. And when I talk about toxic femininity, I'm not talking about just some uh, hyperbolic way to discuss aggressive women, but as a pathological um, ailment that is permeating every aspect of our culture where women are using sex as a tool to manipulate men and um, people, women are using uh, marriage solely as a, uh, a way to advance their lives financially and the level of commitment between men and women has degraded to such a place that it's just purely um, a crapshoot as to whether any relationship will last more than a decade, you know? I mean, the number of single mothers there are in the Western world is increasing so that they make up the majority of families. I mean, I think it's 51, 52% of uh, families are run by a, uh, a woman. So this is a problem. This isn't good for anyone. And I think that at its core, one of the problems that we're facing is the availability, the easy availability and access that men have to sex. Um, women's use of sex as a tool, uh, overtly. I mean, I think women have always used sex as a tool to some degree, but it was in the withholding of sex, and that was the manipulation in the dating process that kept the man's attention and became part of the exchange of goods, if you will, a man's commitment for a woman's sexuality and intimacy as a... Uh, um, as a free exchange, you know, that was part of the agreement. But now, when men are getting sex all over the place, I mean, there's no place you can go and not get sex, then, um, yeah, that, that exchange now loses a lot of its value, and the incentive for men to be involved in relationships with women has reduced significantly. And you throw on top of that, you know, we've had this generation, actually maybe three generations, of the government intervening on behalf of women, um, treating them like minorities as a disadvantaged group and uh, giving them a, an advantage in 
college ap applications, creating diversity requirements at jobs, um, creating set-asides in government contracts, uh, making it more and more available and possible for women to succeed in business, which is wonderful. You know, on one level, I think, hey, it's great. Everyone should have their shot at it. But then um, as these more and more successful women who by their nature tend to have this hypergamous desire to marry up and find a high value, a higher value man, well, the dating pool for most men kind of dries up because every woman thinks she's a high value woman and she needs a higher value man. And the truth of the matter is most of these very high value men have no use for most of these women, quite honestly. I mean, if you're a career woman, let's say you've gone to all this schooling and you're a lawyer and you're you know, single in your early 30s and you want to have a family and you've got to marry up, you want to find a more successful man to marry. So maybe you find a CEO of some company you know, who is maybe 10 years older than you and you tell him that you, you, know, you guys have a romance and you start talking about marriage. Well, what's the incentive in that for him? He's already got everything he needs. He does not need you. He, there's no value that you're bringing to his life. So if you want to have children, well, maybe he would like to have children, but I mean, he doesn't have to get married to have children. I mean, he can, I mean, the world's a big place. You can get surrogates. You can do a lot of things to have children. I mean, if his desire is for children, he doesn't need you for that. He doesn't need you for money. So the fact that you have a good career doesn't offer him anything of value. You're not giving him something he doesn't already have. Um, so what you're really saying is you want him to support you while you're giving birth and, and having children, but then you're gonna go back to your job and he's going to have to pay someone now to watch these children. Um, and now he's gotta pay someone to clean his house and take care of his, you know, his household. Where is the advantage in this for a man? I, I, don't, I don't see it. And I think most men don't see it. So the reason why most women or a lot of women are struggling to find the man they want to, to marry is twofold. One, most men think that it's too much trouble and too much of a hassle to get into a relationship with a woman because quite honestly, it, it, women bring a lot of emotion into a man's life and men have a difficult time managing strong emotions and women can cause a lot of disruption in a man's life. Uh, to the sexuality part of it, it's like men don't need you for sex. They can go anywhere. They, there's lots of women that'll give them sex cheaply, you know? They don't need to give a commitment to get sex. And money, most men are pretty good at managing their money. Most men can manage their money pretty well and they don't need you to do that. So I am at a loss for how Western civilization continues unless there's some significant changes in our culture. And that means getting back to some more traditional gender roles. And I know that's gonna go up some women's ass sideways and I get it, but I don't see another solution. Um, either you guys have to give up your hypergamous nature to find the best possible man to marry and start settling for the men that you're probably more appropriately uh, um, aligned with in the, uh, say in the um, hierarchy of attractiveness and status and um, start considering what contributions you're going to make to any kind of partnership that occurs. Because as it appears right now, the contributions that you guys are making are not that valuable, whether it be sex, money, or um, you, know, you guys don't want to be uh, traditional moms where you're cleaning house and um, making meals. You, most women don't want to have that role. I know there are some that do, but uh, yeah, from a man's perspective, where's the benefit? I don't understand. Shortly after I got married, about a year, in three or four months, um, my wife got pregnant and nine months later we had a lovely daughter and I've talked a lot about you know that experience in another video so I'm not gonna go too deep into that but by the time my daughter was three or four my I was you know, employed my wife was stay-at-home mom so we seem to have a pretty good um, 
equilibrium in our relationship. And it seemed on some level that there might be some, some level of balance there. Um, really there wasn't because we still had to pay for a maid service and um, she was extremely unhappy being a stay-at-home mom. Um, she was depressed and upset and she didn't realize that what she had wanted was something that she probably really didn't want in the end. I think a lot of women don't know what they're getting into and my, my ex-wife certainly had no idea what she was getting into. She had no experience with children at all and it wasn't until after she was pregnant that I think she had actually even changed a diaper. So. She wanted to go back to work. So my, my oldest daughter was four years old and um, my ex-wife wants to start a business. She wants to go into, go into business for herself. Um, so she tried to get my daughter registered at the local school, at the local um, you know, at public schools. And of course they won't take her because she's too young. So she went to the local Montessori school, which Montessori schools are great. They're lovely places. Um, and they made an exception and they took her into their kindergarten at age four. Now this was really a terrible idea. My ex-wife tried to convince me and everyone else that she was really advanced. You know, oh, she's really, really advanced for her age. She can read and spell and she did a great job at the interview with the, you know, the, the counselor, the admissions people. So they, they let her in. Well, it wasn't until about two weeks later that my daughter was just miserable. She was just crying. She was inconsolable at that place. She was too young to be away. She was too young to be spending that much time away from uh, home. There were other more appropriate ways for her to get that school experience without being there, you know, eight or nine hours a day, five days a week. Um, but, you know, my, my, my ex-wife, she was driven to get back to work. Now, at the time, you know, I went along with it, you know, um, my ex-wife said that, oh, she'll be making some money and that can help offset the expenses of all the child care that we're going to have to face. We had to withdraw her from that school and put her into something more appropriate and arrange for other child care. So it was an expensive proposition. Um, and eventually we had to get a, uh, a nanny because my wife got pregnant again. So um, the cost associated with her wanting to work and not wanting to be a stay-at-home mom were greater than the value that she was bringing as a um, self-employed person or even later as an employed person for a long time. Now she finally did make some decent money at a, at a certain point but I would argue that the cost and expenses associated with trying to support her as an employed person while also taking care of the children was really financially a terrible idea. It was a disaster quite honestly because my ex-wife would start one endeavor and then change and go to another endeavor and there would be months or years without her working. Meanwhile, we're still paying all the old expenses. So financially, it was a terrible, terrible situation. I would never recommend that a man get into a situation like that because my ex-wife was unhappy, my children were unhappy, I was unhappy, and um, it added unnecessary stress and financial burden to our household. And if she had just accepted her role as a mom, as a stay-at-home mom, and been comfortable in that position and raised those children until they were of at least elementary school age, maybe even a little beyond that, say like second, third grade, it would have made an enormous difference to everyone's mental health and financial health. But because she was trying to do too many things at the same time, she literally undermined our entire relationship and she caused some levels of trauma to my children and I think that you know they're they're still working some of that stuff out so for you women that are career-minded when it comes time to have a family you're gonna have to make a decision because most men unless you're gonna marry someone you know as you guys call them mid you're gonna marry a guy who's along the same lines that you were at um, and you both guys are gonna equally contribute to the raising of children and the financial burden of the household and you're gonna be real partners 50-50 well, maybe you guys can pull it off. Maybe that will work. Um, but if you're going to marry up and try to get some guy that makes a lot more money than you, when I met my ex-wife, um, I was making about four times as much as she did, three or four times as much. So there was no reason for her to work. She didn't have to work. Um, but anyway, back to, yeah, if you're going to have a family, have a family. Just do that. Just do that. Do one thing and do it really well. Don't try to be everything to everyone. You're gonna fail it at all. It's a simple, simple advice. Do not try being everything to everyone.
um, it will be a disaster. So the solutions here are really pretty simple. You know, we need to turn back the time, turn back the clock a little bit when it comes to the availability of, of sex. Um, it needs to become more and more of a, uh, a sacred bond between a man and a woman and not something that we sell for profit, not something that w women use to manipulate men, not something that um, is a, uh, that puts pressure on younger and younger girls to become more and more promiscuous. That doesn't help anyone, you know? I think that you change a culture one person at a time. So it comes down to each and every person making that decision. And on the men's side, you know, we're the consumers of sex, so there's a lot of responsibility on our side of it too. And you know, since um, pornography has become so uh, prevalent in our culture, that's also devalued sex. And quite frankly, I think that, you know, I'm certainly all open to freedom of speech and you know, I don't, have, I don't want anyone governing this in any way. But I do think it's time for men to start looking at pornography like any other addiction, like drugs or alcohol or um, uh, any, other, any other thing. You know, we can't allow pornography to take the place of intimate relationships with women. And I think a lot of young guys in particular are definitely doing that. They're not, they're not seeking out young women because, first of all, the hypergamous nature of young women and the um, overt sexuality and the use of sex to go up the ladder to the next best man is, um, well, it's vile. I mean, it's vile. And no, I don't blame young guys for not wanting to be a part of it. It's, you know, it's a, it's a shit show. So, um, but if we can change this one person at a time by, if, if you're a young guy and, you know, you're using pornography on a daily basis, then you just need to look at yourself as an alcoholic and you need to stop. You just need to stop, pull the plug on it, you know, because as soon as you start building up a little bit of sexual energy, you're going to start becoming a little more interested in women. And as you become more interested in women, you're gonna start doing the work necessary to attract the right kind of woman. And there are good women out there. They're not all, you know, um, you know uh, psychopaths. There's a lot of really good women out there to be had. And they're just as frustrated as you are because they're struggling to find a decent man. They're not all looking at the Chads and the Tyrones. There's a lot of good women out there that are looking for really good guys. And be that guy and you'll find her. And ladies, you know, you guys have got to start making some choices, you know? Um, are you going to use sex as your major tool for developing relationships with men? Or are you going to start relying more upon your traditional gender roles and being agreeable, um, being that, that better angel on a man's shoulder, being that positive influence in a man's life, and, um, and saving yourself a little bit. Not, maybe you don't need to save all the way to marriage, but maybe keep your body count down to, say, what you can do on one hand, you know? No man wants to marry a woman that has, you know, a body count in the 50s or 100s or whatever. That's, yeah, because that tells me that you're giving it away to everybody. So why should I pay with my commitment to get the same thing? Where's the value in that for me? If you're giving it away to everybody, then why should I pay, you know? Um, so that's how men see you know, girls that sleep around a lot. Yeah, we're all for you when we're drunk at the bar. We're definitely down with you. But um, when it comes time to get married, you are not a consideration. Just FYI, if you're sleeping around, if you're that kind of girl that has a high body count, um, most good men want nothing to do with you, period, period. Now, we'll sleep with you. We will maybe sleep with you, but we're definitely not taking you um, home to mom. We're definitely not going to bring you into our lives in a real way. So consider that next time you're, uh, you know, thinking that maybe you can seduce some Chad or Tyrone into uh, committing to you by sleeping with them. You can't. You can't. That's not where the value is for us. I mean, yeah, we want that. That's part of the value proposition, but there's a lot more to it than that. And if that's all you're offering, then you're, you're, you've got nothing to offer, you know. Um, all right, I think I've moralized enough today. I'm sure I'll get lots of good comments on this one. So I, uh, I look forward to reading them. Thanks very much. You know, I uh, ask you to like and subscribe. And if you know someone who might benefit from this kind of content, please feel free to share it with them. And I will uh, warn you to stay healthy. And if you can, until we get this whole mess sorted out, 
stay single.